let f of x be equal to kx e to the negative x over 2 as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. And then let f of x be equal to 0 as long as x is less than 0. So what that is, is that the function is 0. Then you hit the y-axis. And then the function becomes kx e to the negative x over 2. So the function has some sort of a shape to it where it, it starts at 0, grows, and then comes back down exponentially approaching uh, 0 as x gets large. And there's a constant here called k. We're told that it's a probability density function. What is that? It's a function that's defined for all real values of x, and it has two properties. First thing is that the function always needs, always needs to be greater than or equal to 0. This function is equal to 0 as long as x is negative. And so the other part then, we need that to be greater than or equal to 0. There's three parts to it. There's the k, there's the x, and there's the e to the negative x over 2. Well, x is always positive, so that part checks out. e to the negative x over 2 is always positive. That part checks out. So then, the last part then, to make the entire function positive, it must be true then that, that k must be positive. That's all we know for sure. If that's the case, then the first property will be satisfied. Second property. The total area from negative infinity to infinity sh uh, of the function should be equal to 1. This is going to be used to measure probability. Total probability is 1, 100%. And so that's where we're able to um, have the rest of the problem be that we need to set this integral equal to 1. Now, technically, it goes from minus infinity to infinity. But our function is dead. Um, so um, what should go in here is just a function f of x. But the function is dead from 0, um, from negative infinity up to 0. So what we really only care about is 0 to infinity. We're going to set this equal to 1. So it's our job to find the k that makes this happen. Okay, since our function is 0 for x is less than 0, then um, we can disregard the part to the left of 0 and only deal with the part to the right of 0. All right, great. So our job is to find out what k is to makes this hap that makes this happen. All right, great. So this is an improper integral. We need to recognize it. It's improper. Why? Because this upper limit is infinity. What do you do when you have an improper integral? You need to immediately introduce a limit to handle this. So we're going to let t go to infinity and integrate from 0 to t. Great. Now, to make our life easier, you'll find it necessary to, to get rid of the k. Not get rid of it, but, but pull it out. Pull it out of the integral. In fact, even pull it out of the limit if you want. And so you could do that for constants. And so now let's focus on this integral here. We need to be able to integrate that. How? Integration by parts. OK, great. So how do you do integration by parts for this? Let's just do it the, tr the traditional way, although we definitely can um, use the shortcut. Um, with the power of x only being a 1, it's just um, not much of a shortcut to actually work it all the way out. So let, it'll be good for us to do this. Let's do this. So we have u is equal to x, leaving dv to be the e to the negative x over 2. You take the derivative of the u, and you take the integral of the dv. So du is just dx. And be careful here. When we integrate e to the negative x over 2, we actually get negative 2 e to the negative x over 2. Remember that when you integrate e to the kx, 
what you get out is 1 over k e to the kx. And so with the value of k here being a half, in fact a negative half, if we write it like that, then the reciprocal of that is a positive 2. And so that's how we end up with this guy as our V. A negative 2, sorry. All right, great. So then we set up UV minus the integral of V du. So here's U, here's V. We multiply those together negative 2x e to the negative x over 2 minus the integral of v du. So we have uh, the v again and we multiply that by du. So the minus from integration by parts and the minus from v give us a plus. We can pull the two out. So minus, minus is a plus, and take the 2 out. This makes your life easier. And then you're left with this integral that you've already integrated. You already know that it's negative 2 e to the negative x over 2. With the positive 2 that's there, that gives you a grand total of negative 4 e to the negative x over 2. All right, great. Now, what you can do to make your life easier again is to recognize what they have in common. This e to the negative x over 2 can come out. And if you want, think about it as um, being um, e to the negative x over 2. Um, and what, what we're left with uh, when we take it out is a negative 2x uh, minus a 4. And what we could do with that e to the negative x over 2 is put it in the denominator. All right, great. So we know how to integrate it. We perform the integral. The only thing left is to find out what this limit is, to put in the limits of integration and then uh, evaluate the limit. So we, we were trying to find out what kind of k would make our integral equal to 1. We're trying to solve for the k. We ended up with this limit, and now we know how to integrate. So let's, perf um, let's continue performing the integration by plugging in the limits of integration. Let's put a t in to replace the x. Let's put a 0 in to replace the x and then let's um, see what we end up with. Um, before we deal with the limit, let's see what happens when we plug a 0 in. This part zeroes out and then we get a negative 4 here e to the 0 over 2. That's uh, e to the um, 0 essentially. So that's a 1. And so we end up with a negative 4 over 1 and that will combine to just be um, just be a, a positive four. And what we can do with the limit is bring that inside. Basically, the limit is only on this part that has the t in it. And so now let's talk about this limit. We need to perform this limit. So what do we do? we need to see what happens as t gets big. Well, negative 2 times a very large number goes to negative infinity. The minus 4 doesn't affect that. The numerator is going to negative infinity while the denominator is getting infinitely large. And so this is in the format of negative infinity over infinity. We put quotations around it just because this is not an actual symbol that we're going to um, say is equal to something. So it's ready for L'Hopital's rule. There's two cases, infinity over infinity or zero over zero, which allows you to use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says the following. Trade this limit in for another limit where you take the derivative of the numerator. So negative 2 minus 4's derivative is negative 2. The derivative of the denominator, e to the t over 2, and then the constant of k comes out, 1 half. And we do that limit instead. L'Hopital's rule says they are the same. Our denominator is getting very large. This time our numerator is constant. If you take a constant and divide by a very, very large number, you end up with a very, very small number. It goes to zero as t goes to infinity. All right, then. Well, we were trying to figure out what k 
has to be to make this happen. We know that this limit is zero. We had the four from the lower limit. And so we have four K is equal to one. Or that K is one fourth. When K is one fourth, we'll be sure that we end up with a probability density function because it satisfies the two um, properties that it must be positive and um, it must have a total area equal to one.